Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. You all saw this, or a lot of you did, on the video I published a couple of days or so ago. This is the fake MOSFET tester. This was on that video, How to Test MOSFETs, and I know a lot of you enjoyed that. And I mentioned during the video that I never actually uploaded this as a shared project to PCBWay. That's because this was like the revision zero. It does work to the main part, there is an issue with testing p-type MOSFETs on it and it's quite complex so we have this very large multi-layered switch here which was difficult to fit I had to wire it to the board I needed four pole four way so I couldn't use a simple single layered switch so that was a bit of an issue plus it's a quite expensive to get really and a couple of the problems with the footprints for the connectors so this was never uploaded but I also mentioned in the video, I was working on a new version. I have that ready today. So I'm going to show you today how I've simplified this. I've got rid of this thing. It still has the same facility. So you can still test at all these voltages plus external. Okay. External allows you to drive the MOSFET you're testing from whatever you want. Should you wish to do so. The 3.3 and 5 volts, by the way, this is so you can measure the RDS on at these common voltages that microcontrollers use. So if you're using MOSFETs in your own projects and you want to know the RDS on at the voltage you can drive it rather than what the data sheet says at 10 volts, you can do that. Okay, so that is the old version. I'm now going to show you the new one. And here is my simplified schematic. So I use the same method as before. There's no polarity as such. If you're testing N-type MOSFETs, you connect the positive to here the negative to here and for p-type vice versa i could put a switch but the switch would have to handle 10 amps and to be quite honest you're probably not going to be swapping them over that often so i think this is fine but hey down there yeah so the way this works for n-type quite obvious power comes in through the load we can switch in the lower resistance for 10 amps or one amp load comes to here and the LED, this one is forward biased, is wired across the load. So when current starts to flow, the LED lights up. You'll think, well, a lot of the current is flowing through the low value resistors, two and a half ohms roughly on the 10 amp. So until we have about 1.8 volts across the LED, it won't actually light up. And that's actually correct. That's why we saw on the previous video, the bench power supply showing some current was flowing through the MOSFET before the LED lit. It's because there wasn't enough voltage dropped across the load. Okay. And that's more notable with the 10 amp range. So the load comes to here. That goes into the drain of your end type MOSFET. And the source just goes down to here, the negative ground, okay? That's the current path of the 10 amps. And then we have the gate. So you can see here, two resistors, same value. So the voltage here will increase until there's enough voltage to turn the MOSFET on, okay? Via this switch. Once the voltage here gets to 10 volts, the Zeno will regulate. It won't go any higher. No matter what you do with the power supply coming from your bench power supply, this will be 10 volts. And that goes to the gate, okay? We have the different pin out here, four pins, because different MOSFETs have different pin layouts, but the gate is always at one end. Source and drain could be either way. So it's just to make it easy to connect to any MOSFET. That's how that one works. Okay, so for P-type MOSFETs, this is the positive. So V in two, you can see here, goes into the source of your MOSFET, back out through the drain into the load. So the current flows the opposite way through the load, through the switch. And out here, this is the negative end, negative connection from the bench power supply. And the other LED lights up. So it works exactly the same way. And again, we have a Zener diode in here. So that regulates the gate voltage. This switch, I didn't mention it, but basically this is just a double pole, double throw. So set the switch one way and it connects the gates to here. Okay, set the switch the other way and you can drive the gate externally. Okay, so that's just if you want to use something, I don't know, pulse width modulation or whatever you want, feed it in there. Switching the gate voltage is also simple. So I've done away with that big rotary switch and I have a double pole double throw this is on off 
on. So in the center position, the switch is off and you have the 10 volt zenith. In this position, it puts this 3.3 .3 volt zenith in parallel with the 10 volt. And in the other position, it puts the 5 volt in parallel. Now, you may not have thought about this, but if you put the zenith diodes in parallel, what will happen is when the voltage across the zenith reaches the zenith voltage of the lowest one, 3.3, the voltage will never go any higher. So that one just never conducts. Yeah, that's how it actually works. And the same here. So this is the other half of the same switch, double pole, double throw, center off, and that sets the gate voltage. So the switching is really, really easy with this one. That's a very simple design. I'll put the schematic onto my Google Drive. I'll link it in the video. And I'm going to upload this one now to PCBWay.com so we can get this built. I will give this a quick test. I'm sure this will work because I've effectively tried this on breadboard. I know this arrangement works. Once we've tested it, I will give you guys the link to the shared project. So let's just upload this one. And here we are at PCBWay.com. Let's order these PCBs. So we go to instant quote. Quick order PCB. We add the Gerber file. So this is generated from whatever software you use to design your PCB. Okay, we're uploading it. There you can see my PCB. You'll notice some areas are exposed copy. This is the high current path. So we can fill these with solder or run stiff wires along the tracks as well. And that will allow the tracks to handle the high current. So there's our Gerber. All we need to do now is decide really what color we'd like our PCBs, what thickness. I'll go with the 1.6. These are quite thick, but this is a piece of test equipment. It won't be in a case, so that's quite rugged, quite solid. I can choose my postage to Spain. I'm not in a rush particularly. So six to 10 business days, that is fair enough. Global direct shipping, apply that. And we can see my PCBs are about $42. That's for five of them, okay? Including shipping. Here's my PCB image from the Gerber file. I'll put this again on the Google Drive so you guys can download it and have a look. It's a very simple thing, really. This wasn't complicated to design. Okay, so that is my simplified and redesigned project for the fake MOSFET detector. Once we have one tested, as I say, that'll be a shared project on PCBWay.com. You can go and order your PCBs from there. And the great thing with shared projects is the author, yeah, me in this case, gets a 10% commission as well. Yeah, so it's like buy me a coffee if you buy some PCBs. Okay, so that's the first half of this video because there's something else interesting to tell you guys. If you remember back when we originally looked at this, I put the files on my Google Drive. You guys could download them, everything. So the entire project, which you could then import into whatever PCB design software you wanted, schematic design, and work on it. And I challenged you guys because a lot of people said in the comments, oh, you should make a microcontroller version. And Dema for myself thought, for various reasons, we explained, no. But at least one of you guys thought yes. So I had an email from a very nice guy named Thomas. And Thomas sent me this, said, hey, Rich, I've built it. So you can see we have an Arduino Nano here. We have an OLED display. There's another module here. I think this is a voltage generator, 10 volts, some load resistors, some MOSFETs we can see in here. He sent me a schematic. So this is his tester. This tests N and P type MOSFETs. Well, this is sort of automated. So the Arduino controls this. And basically, this will run a test cycle. So it will measure the threshold voltage, gate threshold. It will also then test the RDS on at different gate voltages and produce a set of results for you. This is his PCB. He says, yes, this needs tidying up. This is a prototype. He can make this much smaller, but guys, prototype, yeah? So I have the PCB. This is designed in Fritzing, which I don't particularly know this software, but Thomas said he will come and reply to any of your questions down there or to your comments, okay? 
I have the source code here, the Gerber, and this is the prototype in action, NMP type. You hit the button to test, it's giving us the gate threshold voltage. It's giving us RDS on at 10 volts at 5 volts. Another example, much clearer this time. Okay, so Thomas is definitely well on the way to making an automated version. Detlef, who's behind me today. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Yeah, you heard him. Detlef has some ideas. I have some ideas on this as well. So we've been chatting with Thomas. We're going to develop something with this as well, we think. It certainly looks promising. Look, PMOS here with the negative voltage, of course, on the gate. Yeah. So let's upload this Gerber as well onto PCBWay.com and I'll order some of these PCBs. And here we go. So this Gerber file was produced with completely different software, but again, we can use it. Okay, and those are Thomas's PCBs. I didn't ask him which color he prefers, so let's do something different and let's have them in blue. This always shows green, by the way, but we will get our PCBs in the color we selected. Okay, guys, so you can see this one is very much in development, very active. There was another project, those of you who've been following the channel a lot, so we have the C210 and C245 soldering iron, which I've been working on with Tim's hardware projects. Tim actually has that working now, and not only is it driving those tips, but it's driving some other ones as well. So we do seem to have a very versatile soldering iron station in development. I'm going to make a through-hole version of this. The original PCB was all service mount. It probably won't make much difference to the size of it anyway. It'd be a little bit bigger, but much easier and cheaper for you guys to build because most of the parts you'll probably have lying around anyway. So that one's also in progress. And next month, we'll get you up to speed with how Tim and myself are getting on with it. And you'll hear from Thomas too, down there. He's using the YouTube username of Chained Unicorn. So... That's the one to look out for. Let me know what you think also with these projects. And I'd like to thank PCBWay once again for sponsoring these videos. Ciao for now, guys.